Now, as the angle predicted, there was no way that with their trillions in needless spending, the Biden brain trust was going to be able to hold down inflation. Couldn't happen. And a new government report shows how Bidenomics continues to ravage the family budget. The consumer price index rose 3.5 percent in March from where it was a year ago. That's more than the so-called experts predicted. Now, of course, the numbers don't lie. But President Biden, mm. you be the judge. Look, we have dramatically reduced inflation from 9 percent down to close to 3 percent. We're in a situation where we're in a better situation than we were when we took office, where inflation is skyrocketing. And we have a plan to deal with it. Looks like the eclipse was still happening over him. That's <laughs> like, forget Bidenomics. This is Lionomics. Do they think we can't search the Internet? Because when Biden took office, inflation was sitting at 1.4 percent. It wasn't 6 percent, it wasn't 7 percent, and it sure as hell wasn't 9 percent. And his claim that people are better situated now, well, I mean, I guess if you think that having to skip lunch or breakfast to pay your bills is progress. Do you think you were better off now or four years ago? Four years ago. Groceries have almost uh, tripled. It's ridiculous. I feel like most of the American public is in trouble. The inflation right now has been crazy high. I could get a sandwich for $7 now. I used to be paying $3.50 back in 2022. Disposable income is on the decline. Think that things are more expensive now? Absolutely. Now, people aren't imagining this. Here are some of the price increases facing Americans. Look at this list. Medical care up 6 percent over the last three years. Really? Apparel up nearly 10 percent. Shelter up 20 percent. Food at home is up 21 percent. New cars about 19 percent. Even used cars are up 19.4 percent. And of course, gas prices. We know what those are. 50 percent up from when Biden took office. What do you say to the families, not just Latino families, but families across the country that don't feel that economic growth, that job creation reflected in their paychecks, in their pockets? Well, it's not yet, but guess what? The 15 million jobs that we've created so far, more than any president has in the time period, were 4.5 million are Latinos. 4.5 more than any other time. I swear I heard people laughing in the background there. Quick fact check. Biden has not really created 15 million jobs. According to Snopes, Biden's net gain from pre-pandemic job levels is just 5.5 million. And if you dig deeper into that jobs report, you see that more than 8.6 million Americans have to work multiple jobs just to get by now. Again, this is not a messaging problem. This is a Biden policy problem. And there's only one way back to growth, prosperity, safety, and yeah, freedom. And yet they want to put the guy who could help us get there behind bars. Think about that. Joining me now, Florida Congressman Byron Donalds, member of the House Financial Services Committee. Congressman, um, they're struggling, people are, to afford basic necessities. Mm. I haven't seen this since I was a little girl during the Carter era, but you see it. And their people's eyes are filled today with anxiety when they're not angry. 100% because people can't afford to just do the basic things to live. All of this stems from the massive overspending from Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer when they were in charge of the entire government for two years. When you massively expand federal spending, that money does come from somewhere. And where it comes from is the purchasing power of every American. Look, if you're rich, you'll figure a way to work it out. But if you're working poor, middle-income families, you have fallen behind massively so because everything is up and your wages are actually down when you got to go to the store. Americans can't continue like this. So you have to have a real economic agenda. You have to have a serious plan on federal spending to curtail that so the American people are allowed to thrive and prosper. Now, Ron Klain, who I don't agree with on much, but he's actually a smart guy. He's the president's um, in charge of their. Uh, well, I think he was working for Biden and uh, mm -hmm. Obama, but now he's very worried about the re-election strategy that they put in place, that it's missing the mark. Politico obtained audio of Klain allegedly saying, I think the president is out there too much talking about bridges. If you go into the grocery store and you know eggs, milk are expensive, the fact that there's a effing bridge is not, and then the tape apparently cuts out. Now, Congressman, is he on to something? He wants them re-elected. He's been paid a lot of money over the years mm -hmm. to deliver the good and bad news to the Democrats, but 
Klain even sees it. I mean, he's not wrong. But what are they going to do? Are they going to abandon their political agenda? Are they going to stop the massive Green New Deal spending? Apparently, according to Wall Street now, it's about 2 to $3 trillion to, for solar panels and windmills, frankly, that we don't need. Where we're going to send that money to China, empower the Chinese against our own interests here at home. The Democrats and Joe Biden have a major issue. They've, they were able to accomplish a lot of their domestic agenda. And it sucks. And it's hurting the American people here at home. So they can't give up the agenda because then they have to tell people that they were wrong. So what we have to do is be, be very simple. We need to be energy independent again at home. We have to be exporting energy around the globe. We have to cut regulations here in D.C. We do have to cut spending here in D.C., allow the economy to flourish, actually secure the border. That's the recipe for success for the American people, not politicians, for the American people. That's the, that's the recipe. Now, well, there, some of your colleagues have very novel ideas that I think I would share with you tonight. One of them is from Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, in her view about what would be fair going forward. Watch. I don't remember which celebrity, but it was actually a celebrity. And I was like, I don't know that that's not necessarily a bad idea. One of the things that they propose is black folk not have to pay taxes. Not only do you owe for the labor that was stolen and killed and all the other things, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact is like we end up being so far behind. But to think that America doesn't owe the descendants of slaves is an error. Congressman, this would be a new way of kind of formulating an old idea, which would be reparations. Well, it's a bad idea. It doesn't work. How are you going to delineate who gets money and who does not? Or in Jasmine's perspective, who pay taxes and who does not? That's a major problem right there. But at the end of the day, what you really want is an economic system with whether you're black, Hispanic, white, doesn't matter. You have an ability to build generational wealth so you can pass that on to your kids. That's the conversation we should be having. But when you have a crazy economic agenda from the Democrats and Joe Biden, it's not possible for people to get ahead and pass on and build assets set growth and pass on generational wealth. That's not going to work. But I'll tell you when it did work under the Trump economy, because under the Trump economy, whether you were black, Hispanic, white, everybody was getting ahead. You were able to actually increase your net worth. You remember those days? I mean, 2019 was just awesome. Oh, I mean, people were people were able to buy houses. Young families were moving into the neighborhood. Now they're have to live in a micro apartment. Then all the liberals will be happy, Congressman. Great to see you, as always. always. All right. If you're worried about the dangers of big government, wait until they use the power of artificial intelligence. A new warning from Elon Musk next.